semester at Otterbein University, where I'll be uh, teaching some classes today, or I, let's say talking with students. We're at OTV, which is Otterbein Television. And Harvey Wasserman, I wanted to talk to you now about voting machines and right. your concern over the years that electronic voting could be used to steal elections. Are you still concerned about this? Well, electronic voting was used to steal the presidential election right here in Ohio in 2004. John Kerry was the rightful winner in 2004 over George W. Bush. The Secretary of State at the time, J. Kenneth Blackwell, and the Governor, Robert Taft, used their power of electronic vote count to flip the vote uh, to uh, George W. Bush How from John Kerry. This? We watched it. We, I grew up here, Amy. We watched it uh, totally right uh, up close and personal. We did the, uh, the accounting. I'm, I work with a political scientist named Bob Fatrakis. We're about to come out with another book, The Strip and Flip of the 2016 Selection. They are stripping the voter rolls in Greg Powest, uh, the great investigative reporter, is doing great work on this, removing African Americans, Hispanics, people who might incline to vote uh, uh, progressive. And they, so that uh, in, in 2004, they stripped 300,000 people from the voter rolls here in the urban areas. Uh, Bush only won by a hundred, less than 120. In um, uh, this year, the about 80 percent of the vote nationally will be cast on electronic voting machines. There is no verifiability. In six key swing states, Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, Michigan, Iowa, and Arizona, you have Republican governors and Republican secretaries of state, and no method of verifying the electronic vote count at midnight or whenever it is on election night. They, those two guys can go in there with an IT person and flip the outcome of, a, of an electronically counted vote by, within about 60 seconds. So all this millions and millions of dollars, people out campaigning and so on, can be negated by an electronic vote vote flip late at night on election night, and there is no way to verify what's happened. They didn't do this with President Obama in he, they 2008. They did. He had too many votes. He was too far out. They couldn't, it would have taken them too many to flip too many states. I believe Obama won by well over 10 million votes. The last, the final vote count was in, official was in seven or but eight. But what months. gives you this idea? Because we've seen it happen. We, 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 when you compare exit polls, which are generally accurate uh, to within 1 percent, with the electronic outcome, there are huge variations. <laughs> we have documented many dozens of different things that they have done uh, over the years to flip electronic How does e-voting, electronic voting, work? And who controls um, the controls on it? Well, that's the key. The electronic voting machines are owned by private corporations, which are Republican in orientation generally. And the, the courts have ruled that the source code on these electronic voting machines is proprietary. So even the, uh, the governments that buy or lease these machines have no access to a final verification process. Even Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. And uh, we know that the vote count was flipped in 2004. We know it was flipped in Volusia County in 2000. Where is Volusia uh, in, County? In, in Florida, when, when uh, Al Gore basically was the rightful winner and George W. Bush won the election. I mean, the only and great they were electronic voting machines? In Volusia County, they were, yes. In the southern part of Florida, they used butterfly ballots, as you'll recall. The only good thing we can say about George W. Bush is that the American people never actually elected him president. And we're looking now in 2016, an election where we very easily flipped in those six key swing states and elsewhere. What do you think is the answer? Uh, we have to have um, universal hand-counted paper ballots, and Bernie Sanders has endorsed that. We have to have automatic voter registration, where people can monitor the registration rolls, because people are being stripped from the re registration rolls, mostly, of course, African-American and Hispanic. But this year, we're not going to get that. And this year is going to be very, very difficult in a close election to monitor exactly what happens, because the these are black boxes. We have a wonderful actress named Bev Harris, who's been working with Greg Powest and others, who has shown in black box voting that the public has no real access, no verification process for the electronic votes. And so we're going through this huge charade here of a national campaign, primaries, and then a general election where hundreds of millions of dollars will be spent. And, and on election night, in 60 seconds, the actual outcome can be flipped electronically in key swing states with no verification whatsoever. If there are electronic voting machines everywhere, which there are now, Pretty right? much, yes. How do you think they can be protected, people can be sure that their vote is counted, that they cast, even using electronic voting they machines? Can't be. 
You cannot verify an electronic voting machine. They are privately owned by private corporations, and the proprietary software prevents the public from giving access to the actual vote count. We, we're going into a national election, and not just the presidency, <laughs> but, we, but Senate seats, House seats. We believe three Senate seats in 2014 were stolen in North Carolina, um, uh, Colorado, and Alaska, uh, that the Republicans do not have a legitimate 54 seat or whatever it is majority in the Senate. And and this will happen again. It's not just the presidency. And we've been voting. This, we have written seven books about this, Bob Fatrakis and I, from our experience here in Ohio uh, in 2004. And again, we have a Republican governor, a Republican secretary of state. No verifiability on the electronic vote count. It will be arbitrary when push comes to shove on midnight, one o'clock on election night, what the outcome will Why be. Why do you think just Republicans would do it? Oh, no, Democrats would definitely do it. I have, we have strong questions about Rahm Emanuel being reelected in, uh, in Chicago, for example. We have no doubt that Scott Walker stole his, his uh, reelection re in, in Wisconsin. Based on what? Uh, based on the, the miraculous discovery of, of several thousand votes in a, in a so-called uh, a glitched uh, a computer voting machine uh, that gave him uh, a victory where it was clearly a defeat. You know, this is this is stuff that was going on a long time. These methods were perfected more or less overseas by the CIA and other covert and overt operations. They came back. It started in 1988 with George H. W. Bush using electronic voting machines in New Hampshire to beat Bob Dole in the 1988 primary. And we have seen since then the use of electronic voting machines all across the country to flip elections after they have stripped the voter rolls. And, you when know— When you say it, stripping the voter rolls, you mean? Yes. Well, we, we, Greg Powis has reported on this. In, in Florida, 2000, 90,000 mostly black and Hispanic voters were stripped out of the voter rolls before the election in a, in a vote count that was won by 600 votes. And in Ohio, 2004, 300,000 voters in primarily urban areas were stripped off the voter rolls. People showed up to vote in the same precinct, as did I, by the way. They were, I was de denied my absentee ballot, um, and we had a federal lawsuit on this, which we won and went nowhere after that. But the reality is that we are voting in black boxes, and that the governors and secretaries of state of these key swing states, but wherever you have a governor and secretary of state from the same party, be they Democrat or Republican, they have have the power under the electronic voting system to flip the outcome of an election with no verifiability because the courts have ruled that these privately owned voting machines have proprietary software. It's a nightmare. And it's not democracy. I mean, Bernie Sanders has showed that the election, that the, uh, the campaign finance is rigged, that the economy is rigged. Why wouldn't they take the very small next step to rig the electronic voting machines? Well, we're going to leave it there for right now. Harvey Wasserman, independent journalist, longtime anti-nuclear activist. His recent article for the worldbeyondwar.org is Why the Deafening Silence on Cutting the Military Budget. Uh, his upcoming book is called The Strip and Flip Selection of 2000. 2016, five Jim Crows and electronic election theft.